So Tyler, you're a recent alum of Shell Lake. When, uh, when did you actually attend the Art Center? Um, all right, I did like, I think three, maybe four summers as a camper from probably summer of like, if I remember this right, like 2013, 14, 15. Cool. And then I was uh, like an intern and like, um, like kind of co-musical director for the show choir camp, uh, like doing arrangements and stuff for a couple summers. Uh, and then I was a camp counselor, um, summer of 2017 or 18. Sure. Sorry, awesome. I should have, I should have <laughs> figured this out. Oh no, that's, that's a storied history with, uh, <laughs> Shell Lake. That's awesome. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. So, so were you from the, uh, Shell Lake area or did you grow no, up? In... So I'm from, uh, I'm from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, just cool. a little bit Southwest of Minneapolis. Nice. Um, Quick little yeah. uh, drive over. Yeah. But, uh, so what did you, what were the original camps that you attended uh, at Shell Lake? I always did the second jazz combo week. Cool. Or is it? Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's right. Yeah, that sounds mm -hmm. really yes. right. So uh, what, what was your biggest takeaway while you were there? Um, was it kind of like the friends that you met or something that you learned that was really mm -hmm. interesting? Um, I guess, I mean, def I mean, some of the friends I made there, I like still talk to like this week, even like, <laughs> like Sweet. really yeah. still keeping in touch with, um, and I think just the, I feel like I was really impacted by like the idea that there was like such a community around the music I loved and that like, yeah, like I would go back to Eden Prairie, Minnesota, where there weren't a lot of other jazz music. I mean, I could like go to Minneapolis to play, but and I would go back to my life. But like out there in the world, there were like a lot of other people like on the same page about like the importance of the music. Um, I think that was really inspiring. Definitely. People come from like different walks of life, I'm sure, too, and seeing all that and having that common ground of music where you're all working towards something like that. That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So then uh, one other thing that we wanted to do for some uh, potential students is uh, having all of these alumni that we're planning on interviewing send in a 10 or so song playlist. Um, and so I listened to yours. It was awesome. <laughs> and uh, one of, one of the main things that I noticed um, just kind of bouncing around was mm. Um, you had obviously some modern things um, like Casa Overall and uh, mm -hmm. Erica Badu. And then you also had some classical sort of jazz styles, but mm -hmm. they all kind of mended together with that backbone of jazz. Like even with the modern productions and modern sounds that still had that kind of binding element of jazz in the base of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, what, what were your favorite uh, of those, of those songs? Some of the th takeaways that you have, I guess. Um. I mean, they're all my, they wouldn't be on the playlist if they weren't my favorites. So they're all my favorites. But um, I guess in terms of like things I like keep coming back to over and over again, <laughs> like throughout my life, that Errol Garner uh, live album, Concert by the Sea, like is such a, such a master class <laughs> in like ensemble playing and rhythm section playing and like it's just disgusting <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just such a sound album i mean i that was one that i gave that just that particular track um mm -hmm. like teach me tonight i gave mm -hmm. that um probably four or five lessons back to back because it's like you just have a very <laughs> human element where it's like it mm -hmm. i don't know it, it goes beyond music i feel like there definitely so, yeah definitely. Is there, is there anything particular like in the music that you point to as like inspiration to from that or? Mm. The, like really most aspects of that recording, I think. Like the fact that there are like three or four drum fills on that album, <laughs> like they have such a dedication to like just laying it down, like just keeping it, <laughs> keeping it where it is. Yeah, and like that and that kind of thing is like the I mean throughout this playlist there's a lot of different like models for like 
ensemble playing and accompaniment in time playing. And I think that's one that I guess doesn't really get taught about a lot because people think it's like boring to play the same thing for a long time. But listen to what it does for the music. If like you're really dedicated to creating that like sound and time. Like look how free Errol Garner can be over that. Like look like what what's possible when you like are that dedicated to supporting someone. Definitely. And it's it's just a master kind of sound where it's like everybody just knows what each other are going to do and it, it all just kind of clicks. And mm -hmm. yeah, that, I can only imagine being at a point where you could play with that group of people for that long and just be able to know what each other are going to do, being able to read all that and then just have something down so precise where, like you said, just like the drum fills, anything like that. You can point to so many things that it, it's like you just have to know that and mm -hmm. that's just got to be studied and orchestrated over a period mm -hmm. of time but the other thing about that song is like i guess we don't we we wouldn't know because we're like living in 2020 but that was like a pop song like that was like I oh yeah don't know if it was actually like in the top 40 like literally but like there's an Etta james version there's a there's like an Amy Winehouse version. There's like, like it was like a pop a pop song that you would hear. It it's just insane to think how that compares and that I mean that's it's fundamental really in that aspect. Yeah. So yeah, awesome. What are you playing nowadays? How <laughs> are you doing any recording? Are you doing any like the virtual aspect's obviously difficult, but are you kind of honing in on? what you're doing and strengthening your skills? Definitely. Um, I think right now, more than ever, is, is a great time to practice your like production skills and your recording skills. Um, and yeah, I'm doing like a, I guess like a virtual senior recital um, where I'm like recording all this stuff and sending it to my friends so they can play on it and send it back to me. And, uh, and that's been... Um, I mean, really good. It's a really good exercise to record yourself and have to hear it over and over again because <laughs> you better you better play something you like <laughs> or something yeah. you're proud of. Definitely. It it's nice that the collaborative aspect is still there too, I bet. Like mm. just not being able to play it together but still being able to play together and mm. kind of send it to each other. That's yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, so I guess the next question that I have is like, what should young people going into um, the music field um, anywhere be playing, composing, um, anything like that, um, even those potentially come through camps at Shell Lake, what should they kind of prepare for? So I guess like, what's your outlook on it? What do you think uh, kids should look for? Um, what they should be prepared for. Like it's, <laughs> it's a tricky think, uh, question i know <laughs> yeah, it's a really big question and there there's i mean there's things I, there's a lot of things i could say and but kind of no matter what it's going to be really hard it's going to be like one of the i mean you're going to get some of the best moments of your life out of it and like it's going to be really really hard <laughs> um and i think when you when you choose to pursue something you love like as your I guess as your career, we, there's different schools of thought around that too, I guess. <laughs> um, but when you choose to pursue something you love with like a lot of your life, like I think there's a lot of challenges around like separation between your personal life and your professional life because they're the same thing. <laughs> and that is really hard a lot of the time because you'll take everything really personally <laughs> and like professional and like musical evolution is personal evolution in that sense so it's really difficult but really like you're gonna grow a lot <laughs> and it's also like one of the most fulfilling things you could conceive of doing <laughs> Definitely. Like it's going to just be everything wrapped all in one. 
and there's really nothing I could say that could make it easier. <laughs> yeah. But just know that it is going to be really hard, and that's good. And that means you're doing it. <laughs> you're, you're doing it right. Then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it's just kind of crazy to think about that. Pursuing it as sort of a career, like you said, you're not mm-hmm. going into a nine to nine to five. You're not working like just for something. It's it's kind of an all the time mm-hmm. thing. And so you you kind of mentioned, have you felt yourself kind of grow through your musical process as well? All the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if if you've hit a moment where you're not, you should kind of reevaluate <laughs> because <laughs> you should be growing all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's <laughs> that can be really exhausting, and you should definitely take breaks from music <laughs> for sure things, but that is a good sign, <laughs> yeah, definitely um cool, so then I guess where so where are you at right now uh city wise um, job wise yeah. what's uh what's going on uh I'm in Boston, Massachusetts right now, I'm finishing my last semester at new england conservatory um yeah Sweet. <laughs> I, i'm like just working like as a ta at school for the last this last little bit and then i'll be out has a uh, so has i guess the musical education process has that had a pretty significant change with the pandemic or is that something that has been kind of easier to transition to Mm. um i mean obviously it kind of has to um yeah i mean people are figuring it out i i think sometimes and i guess i came like this time like right now (laughs) not even but like some some like different schools of thought or like getting caught up and trying to like recreate like the normal way of doing things where actually like this format can really lend itself well to a lot of other things that are also really important to do um and i i think nec has done like there have been a number of teachers that have really like accepted that shift and been like, now is an amazing time to like really dig in and talk about solo playing or like, or talk about recording or talk about whatever you like things we wouldn't normally have the time to do when it's like, you have to play with like your ensembles all the time. Like, and that's kind of just the thing. Um, but there's a lot of other good things to do. <laughs> Definitely. Like focusing yeah. more on individual development to just kind of strengthen the whole piece when it is something that is able to come back together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely, I think a lot of people are doing that right now. So then I guess, why is it important to you right now, or why should it be important to people to support the arts and art centers like Shell Lake um, right now more than ever? Mm. Um, I think that like places that are like set aside to be creative and imaginative, like those like literally need to happen. <laughs> there, that that is not, there have been different things in our world that have convinced us that that's kind of an optional thing. That is so not, <laughs> not <laughs> optional, <laughs> like imaginative, spaces like literally need to exist (laughs) and i think that being imaginative through music can totally be like the gateway (laughs) the gateway drug to like imagining like our world being better in a lot of ways and like i think music can be like a sandbox for like how we can apply things to the the world but we can do it in music first like like through this playlist i i tried to include a lot of different like models for interaction and like how a team works together and like that (laughs) we'll do it in music but really like it's so we can do it in our lives like like 
places where we focus on creating together are like we're like making the blueprints for like our actual lives <laughs> definitely yeah no and and like the the things that are going to come out of this i think especially and in, in these creative spaces are just what's going to be incredible i don't know and mm -hmm. music has done that before too i mean mm -hmm. you look at history and music has been kind of that vessel of mirroring what you know we're doing it here you can do it in real life too and it works you know especially yeah. in the jazz tradition mm -hmm. like, absolutely there were a lot of things that could not have been said verbally that were said through music yeah and that that is a big part of the music we make <laughs> I don't, there are a lot of women in jazz history there are queer people in jazz history mm -hmm. like that like jazz is and has been a place for that and there are certain like like methods of jazz education that exclude that but that's that's the weird thing <laughs> like that is not uh, an accurate depiction of like who has been here and has been doing this mm -hmm. um so i hope i can kind of convey that through what i through what i it was a very male dominated kind of mm -hmm. genre before and it's like playing playing uh piano or i think it was i want to say it was her it was either her or um well mary lou williams and lil hardin were both like monster pianists okay it must have been mary lou williams then i think um where like piano for the most part was just dominated by men in that mm -hmm. time and it was like just having her be like the main uh, element of that and being the main pianist for that mm -hmm. is just that's huge yeah groundbreaking so yeah and like yeah she re and she was uh sh like she taught um Thelonious Monk and Charlie Parker and like a lot of <laughs> the generation of people who we see to like kind of begin there's like a school of thought where people think jazz begins with Charlie Parker not be but like like linear improvisation like really like takes off with charlie parker but there was a lot that happened before that <laughs> and oh, there were a lot of people that taught them <laughs> that are really worth looking into <laughs> i think mary lou williams being an important one <laughs> mm -hmm. they're i mean they're just the backbone they're the foundation and then they kind of took that and ran with it so mm -hmm. i'm sure you mentioned Thelonious. did you listen to his the recent album that came out earlier this year the uh it was kind of like a buried away tape i think that mm. just got released earlier no i don't think i have but oh i'd recommend checking I, it I out should. it was it was really solid but uh yeah who no. was it the was it just the quartet the with i believe so Johnson? yeah okay. yep and nice. i i'm trying to remember exactly when what the time period was it was from but um yeah it was let it just a solid recording and nice yeah really uh good stuff yeah but that that band is like i mean if i had 11 i probably would have put <laughs> a Thelonious <Monk> Quartet <laughs> track on there because they are such like the past present and future <laughs> rolled into one I mean, we can throw it on just send me a send me a <laughs> sure. song and All right. All <laughs> i'll right. throw it in there but... <laughs> yeah but sounds good <laughs> yeah no and i mean Going back on, on the mirror thing, like society seeing now, especially that like these people are doing this in the music community and then mm -hmm. that they have been doing it for forever that, I mean, you can look to that as just a point of really cool um, progress and moving forward just socially mm -hmm. from music and kind mm -hmm. of bridging that gap. Yeah. And, and um, I think through this, playlist i also wanted to kind of communicate that like jazz and blues can like take on so many different roles i guess um like the the one we kind of learn about in jazz education is like kind of like an abstracted like like bebop being kind of an abstracted version of of like song playing in a way and that a lot of like the music that what we call jazz like comes from 
it, like comes from songwriters and comes from comes from blues musicians and comes from like communities of music and that that is like <laughs> that's something we could learn a lot from i think <laughs> um and yeah it's yeah it's a snapshot of those communities and kind of like mm -hmm. i don't know you it's a story in and of itself really mm -hmm. um and there's a lot to learn from that no doubt so yeah i mean charlie parker was definitely a storyteller but it's kind of you know it's a lot less literal in a lot of ways and if you go back a little bit further <laughs> you'll find people that were doing it much more literally and taking inspiration from that i think can provide us with a whole new set of possibilities um and i, I think like the skills we learn at places like Shell Lake, like ear training and like playing together and practicing our instruments, like are obviously invaluable. But we can apply those skills to a lot of other like models of what this music can be in a lot of ways. So I, I guess I made the playlist to kind of widen people's scope of like what <laughs> what this music is. <laughs> It's that's awesome. It's just it's really important too for people to hear that, and mm -hmm. exactly what we were going for. So I mean, I you know we appreciate <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Cool.